So before we go off into our study about evil, we just finished the introduction, uh, two parts found on YouTube and our SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Let's look at the first place where evil shows up in the Bible. Genesis 2 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is present to the sight and good for food. A tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And a tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's the first time evil shows up. Now, we're going to do this extensive study. About evil. I'm looking for a passage here, real good, real quick. And if you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 4, or verse 3, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. That's the first time good shows up. The light, Jesus Christ, light of the Bible, light of God. That's good. Evil, here's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. I don't know who made this tree. Now it says, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight of beautiful trees. And there are a lot of beautiful trees when you're up north in New England when the weather changes in the fall. Beautiful. And good for food, apple trees, peach trees, almond trees, all kinds of food trees. And good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. In the middle of the garden that God made, there's a tree of life. And the tree of knowledge and good and evil. I don't know if, if I mean, I would believe that God made the tree of life, but I don't know. Did God or the devil make the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Knowledge, to know. You go to college to get knowledge and learn a particular trade. What is evil? What is the knowledge of good and evil? I'll tell you what evil is. Once Adam and Eve ate that fruit, Genesis chapter 3, this is what they learned. For Eve, verse 16 of chapter 3 of Genesis, <clears throat> Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. The evil that the woman learned is sorrow. And thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Eve and every mother learned that motherhood brings sorrow. That's an evil. Whether it's not just your, ch your children growing up in, in sin and, and disobeying God, but I mean, he, have you ever had to nurse a child that was really sick? Have you ever had to attend a child in the emergency room and not know what's wrong? Have you not felt for a child that, you know, you have to discipline them? And listen, you say, this will hurt me worse than hurt you. And sometimes, listen, discipline my children. I know we're talking about most. It does hurt our heart because we don't want to do it. You ever have a child just go bad on you, go sour on you? That's sorrow. Breaking a mother's heart, that's evil. That's what Eve learned. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. The woman spoke up, and Adam didn't say nothing in verses 2 and 3, talking to the serpent. As a result of that, God says, listen, you now have to be put under your husband. You have to be under the authority of your husband. I, the Bible even says later on, I'm not even going to allow you to preach and teach in the church. He usurped the authority over the man because you blew it in verse 2 and 3. Now, women have a lot of knowledge. Women have a lot of, of know-how and, and raising children and taking care of a home, but you're not giving that authority no more. That's evil. Now, when we go into New Jerusalem and there's neither male or female, and we're holy and righteous and sinless, perfected, there is no classes of, you know, I'm the husband, you're the wife, I'm the boss, and you're the servant. No, we're all 
with God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit as one. What did what did Adam learn? The evil. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, he shouldn't have, and has eaten the tree which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground. That's an evil. For thy sake. That's an evil. Adam never had a cursed ground. And I have been told by, by people who say, you know, you can go out in the middle of the forest somewhere and the ground cover is beautiful, it's right, it's, it's precious. But as soon as man takes an iron tool to the ground and digs a hole, weeds will grow. And I've seen that. I've been out in, in the woods in, in Connecticut where I grew up. And it's just nice. I, I've been where there's been rock walls, old rock walls by by farmers and by plant by people who own the property and they dug up the rocks because there's a lot of rocks in Connecticut. And those rocks, the houses, the, the farms and the, the, the dairy, whatever that land was, and when man leaves it, it gets over covered with weeds. Not so in the forest where it's been untouched by man. In sorrow, gee, sorrow seems to be a thing of evil. Thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles. Okay, Adam, you, you got thorns and thistles. Adam could have gone before Genesis 3, picked his wife a rose, and there would have been no thorns on it. He could hold that stem in there and say, Here, honey, without bleeding. Shall bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In sweat. Sweat was evil. I'm going to assume that there was no sweating before the eating of the fruit by what this says. Thou shalt eat bread till they return to the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and dust thou shalt eat. You know what another evil was of, of that knowledge, the tree of knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Death. Mortuary, cemetery, graveyard. They were not around in Adam and Eve's time before Genesis 3. You know what another evil was? When a parent opens up the, the bathroom door, opens up the room their, of their children, and they see they're smoking or doing illegal drugs. When you kick open the, the bedroom door and you find your spouse with another person besides you. When you open up the door and you found that a loved one has committed suicide. I'll tell you another result of that evil. Behind me, my house, I, I, I can see it. I don't know, my, I can't judge mileage and measurements. I'm bad on that. There's a hospital. 11, 12 floors in the hospital. That's an evil. Now, hospital, remember, we talked about this last time. Hospitals are good. They make you feel better. But as a result of Adam and Eve eating that fruit, we got a hospital behind it. If I go up International uh, Boulevard, go past the Speedway, and go up into Volusia County, heading toward land, there's two, three, four jails. One of them is a juvenile correction. That's evil. Before Genesis 3, there were no prisons. We got Daytona Beach. I've seen, I believe it's three, maybe more. I don't know about, but we got one major and two satellite police stations. There was no need of police before Genesis 3. Evil. Now remember, evil, the consequences of sin. We got to have police. We got to have a, a, a hospital. We got to have a prison. We got to. I hear ambulances and police cars all the time, and there's a firehouse right around the corner. Now, the fire department's good. It's not evil, but because the result of sinning against God and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we got to have a fire department. we got to have a police department. we got to have a hospital. But remember what we talked about last time, introduction. Evil is not always necessary bad. We looked at marijuana and we looked at, you know, drugs and we looked at tobacco and the hospital. Listen, I got an ear infection. I, I, 
I've had wives that were sick with cancer. And my daughter one time almost sliced off her thumb. We bring them there, and it's not evil to bring them there, and they take care of you, and they try to help you the best they can. That's not the evil. But the fact is, we get injured. We have stuff happen to us. We have medical needs that happen to us. First aid, diagnosis, x-rays, cat scans. That's not evil, but that is because the knowledge evil that our bodies are now armed through agony, pain, suffering, sorrow, and then death. Imagine, imagine the time here. Uh, let's see. And I'm not even going to my notes yet. This is just something I guess the Lord is laying in my heart. And look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 25. Here's another evil. I've had this happen to me twice. Not a child, but I had two wives die with breast cancer. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare the son, that's Eve, and said, or, or excuse me, and called his name Seth. Eve speaking, for God has said, God said she, has appointed another seed instead of, Cain, instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Imagine that news that came to Eve that day. Where's my son Abel? Your other son killed him. Murder is an evil. Imagine that day when Mother Eve got the news. I don't know how she got it, but she knew. Genesis 4, 25. She knew that her son was murdered. Think about all the all the mothers, all the fathers out there who have had to had the police or somebody come knocking on the door and say, your son or your daughter ain't coming home no more. Your husband, your spouse ain't coming home no more. I said, I had two wives that died in the hospital care. My first wife, I got I got the phone, I got two phone calls in the morning. The second one, you gotta come now. And I had I had no idea what was happening. My second wife, I, I had been in hospice. I, I knew I didn't think it was going to happen that quick. But when you have a loved one die in front of you, they're not coming home no more. I love them, and they're with the Lord. They're saved. They're with the Lord Jesus Christ. They're in glory. But that's an evil. You know what God intended when he made Eve a helpmeet for, for Adam? They're to be together in marriage for all life. There was no death until they ate of that fruit. So God intended the first husband and wife to be together forever. And we got to say in our marriage vows, which we probably don't today, but I would have say, I would have, if the Lord gave me a third wife, Lord willing, pray for me about that. I would have the pastor. My pastor would be respectful enough. My pastor would be Bible enough to say, to death do your part. God never said that to Adam and Eve. There was no death. There would be no needs before Genesis 3 for caskets. There would be no needs for coffins and sepulchres. That's the evil that was been come. When we first saw it in Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2 9, when evil first showed up, and evil hadn't come yet. It was a tree, it was a warning to man. But man didn't know what evil really was. God said, Genesis chapter 2 again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, Adam, there's no Eve yet, saying, Every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, eat the apple, eat the peach. Eat the, uh, you know, the nut trees, coconuts. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the second time it shows up, evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That evil's death, the consequences of the sin of eating that fruit, you're going to die, Adam. Now, Adam didn't die right away, but he did die eventually in Genesis 5. 
But in between that time, we know he had one son murdered, Abel. We don't know how many children died before he, he died. He had sons and daughters, Genesis 5 said. We don't know how many times he witnessed death until he died himself. And that is because, Adam, you ate of a tree that you didn't know. So when, when, when God comes up to Adam and says, that tree of knowledge is good in me, he, Adam did not know what evil was. He had no, no definition, no dictionary, no Bible to say, oh, evil is bad for you. Adam didn't even know what death was. To die? I, I... Adam and Eve had to learn the hard way about evil, and so do we. I mean... I don't remember exactly when, but I can remember my mom saying, don't touch the stove, it's hot. Don't touch the stove. And the evil was, I had to go touch that stove and realize, ah, it is hot. What's the evil? I burned myself. I don't know, my fingers, my hands, or something. But I had to learn from that evil the hard way. I had pain for an hour or whatever, how long. I, I had that memory not to be careful not to touch that stuff. And there are many times accidentally you, you touch the the inside the oven, turn on the, what's the rack and all that, you'll burn yourself by accident, or you, you'll bite into something that's really hard hot, or you know, you take something out of the toaster oven, and oh wow, I should have had gloves. And we learn. And there are some people, sadly enough, that first and second and third degree burns are the evil from being burned that they have to live with their entire life now. Scars, pain. There are people in hospitals today, third degree burns, and it's just their life is miserable because a fire or a chemical. Evil is a result from doing something wrong. And what is the wrong is the nature that Adam and Eve were warned. Adam should have warned Eve, I don't know if he did or not, it's not recorded, that that tree were not to eat, and the devil would say, hey, how's that tree? And the devil enticed, because look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent, and Revelation 12 says, that serpent, the old serpent, is the devil, is Satan, is the dragon, was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said, the serpent said to the woman, yea, as God said you should not eat of every tree of the garden set in the mood that i got my eye on one tree and evidently eve had her eye on that tree too and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden okay she knew that part now she we're not going to go into how she changed the bible and added the, but we're not going to do that today but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Well, she misquoted the thing. But the mist of the garden? Go back over to Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. Out of the garden, out of the ground, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is in the pleasant in, to the sight. Good for, uh, I'm, excuse me, I'm reading too quick. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he tells us that in the middle of that garden there were two trees she didn't have her eyes on the tree of life she had her eyes on the tree of good and evil and the devil knew that she did not know what the consequences she did not know what the evil would bring the good she knew, her husband loved her and took care of her. The animals would help them. And they had a place of paradise. They had all the food. They, that was the good. What would be the evil? Honey, go pick me some uh, Go pick me some oranges. Okay? He picks some oranges. And after a while, the, the oranges and the bananas and all that, they began to rot. They began to get worms. You couldn't eat them after you picked them. Spoilage became evil. Eve, what's that on your arm there? Oh, I cut myself when I'm going to the bushes. It hurts, too. That's an evil. Ow, what was that? Adam, what was that? 
That was a mosquito that thing bit me. Ow! It's stinging. That's the evil. Insect bites. Infection. Idiprofen. I got idiprofen here because I got an ear infection. I got Tylenol over here because I got an ear infection. Ear infection. That's a result of the knowledge of, of good and evil. And it's a shame. That evil shows up in Genesis 2 9, and there's no consequences in 2 9. It, there, is, there it is. It's there. And then in 2 17, God says, Don't, God gives a warning. God says, Don't eat of that fruit. And then we go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Eve, where's the good and evil. You didn't even mention that. You notice that? There's two trees in the midst of the garden, Eve. There's a tree of life and the tree of good and knowledge of evil. You didn't tell us that you're looking at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You, didn't, you, left, you just said the tree. And we know what that tree was. Because the serpent said, you shall not surely die. We know what that, that tree was. It was a tree that God told Adam, don't eat of, thou shalt surely die. You know what God doesn't, I mean, you know what the devil doesn't tell you? When you get that first sip of beer, he doesn't tell you that your whole life may be, may be messed up, your whole life may be corrupt, and you may be living at a mission. You may be living underneath a bridge, you may be homeless, and your family may just be forbidden for you because you had one little sip of, of beer, and now you're just a full-blown drunk. Sin. What is the evil of alcohol? It's not what the commercials show. It's a man who has destroyed his family. It's a man who buys his liquor by taking food out of their mouth, taking clothes off their 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 naked body, to use it to buy alcohol. It is the, the mistreating your spouse and verbally abusing your spouse and physically abusing your spouse because you're just too darn drunk. And maybe going home, driving home, DUI, and, and you end up causing uh, serious injury or death to others. Oh, I know, I know how to drink. But the consequences, the evil, how you destroyed your employer because he can't rely on you, how you destroyed your spouse because she's afraid of you, how you destroyed your children because you're stealing the stuff that they need for the, for the money you need to buy that junk. And that goes with tobacco products and that goes with illegal drugs. Who would ever thought taking one little smoke of a cigarette in your body? Is <coughs> oh, I don't feel. It. <coughs> uh, and you're smoking one pack, and you're smoking two packs, and you're smoking three packs, and then the doctor tells you you got lung cancer, you got emphysema. When it's warning on the package by the Surgeon General, God said not to eat of that fruit of that tree. And the Surgeon General says, don't smoke and don't chew this crap. Or you get cancer, you get health problems. I get emphysema from smoking. I passed out on the hood of my car and I couldn't breathe walking upstairs. That's not God's fault. That's my fault. Even then, the package said, Surgeon General's warning. We sin when we have been warned by God, and we have sin when we have been warned by people of authority. You are a wicked parent if you let your child take a little sip of alcohol. You're a wicked parent when you let your child take a smoke of, of a cigarette. You're a wicked just for smoking that stuff in front of your children, letting them inhale that secondhand smoke. That's wicked. I can say that because I smoked when I had with my child. Thank God, God gave me the victory over to quit that filthy stuff. It's all under the blood now.
but still wicked. I was wicked for doing it. But there you go. That's the first time evil shows up in the Bible, and it's, it's a fruit of a tree that the devil says, come. And when it comes to evil, the devil will show up and say, come. And he'll use commercials and advertisements to say, it is a good life. No, it's not a good life. Because it says the knowledge of good and evil. The good's not the evil and the evil's not the good. But the devil will make it look good. When it's absolutely filthy and absolutely sinful. And everything was good in the garden that day. Even with the serpent talking to Eve, things are good. It's the moment that Eve took that fruit and the moment that Eve bit into that fruit and gave it to her husband and he bit. Then, the sin. There was a presentation. There was an elimination. Elimin, elimination. There was a debate and then there was action. Again, I'm saying we got when we're looking at this study evil, we gotta look at it very carefully because like I said, the hospital behind me is not evil, but the hospital is evil because it's a consequence of sinning against God. You go to the uh, here's something here, here, just thought of, I never had this happen. I think it happened to my brother. My brother my brother was the one that would break his arms and all that bone. I think there was one time he had to go to the hospital. Oh, I've heard of the story. And they have to relocate your bone or your arm or something. It popped out of the socket and they got to put it back. That pain is evil. But the doctor doing it is not evil. But it's evil because of sin. A tetanus shot hurts. But a tetanus shot is not evil, but the consequences of sin, it is evil that you could get infection if you don't get it. Many people think the flu shot is evil. And it's a great debate. But if it prevents you from getting the flu, is it evil? No. The flu, the flu is here. But then if there's consequences against people who do get the flu shot and things that happen afterwards, side effects, the side effects are evil. There would be no evil today if Adam would have left that tree alone. You say, what about Eve? If Eve would have taken that fruit and Adam said, you know what, you're in trouble. I'm going to call upon God. What, I mean, there's a lot of consequences that could have happened in Genesis 3 that didn't happen. You can't change that. But as the consequences of the evil, sorrow, pain, there's a rulership. There's a family order now. And you know why families are destroyed today? You know why churches are destroyed today? Because the wife puts her children ahead to husband. Where Ephesians says, God, Jesus, the husband, the wife, the children, and the job. You know why families are destroyed? Because the husband puts the job ahead of the children. You know why families are destroyed today? Because the father has to have his Wednesday bowling night instead of gathering his children together and his wife together to go to church in the midweek service. It's when you violate. Listen, like I said, I was married twice. Both my wives died. Both my wives had the understanding that I love God and Jesus Christ more than I love them. And I had the understanding that they loved God and Jesus Christ more than they loved me. You know why we had a successful marriage? You know why our marriage lasted to death? Because we love God and Jesus Christ. And when you can love God and Jesus Christ, we can love each other and overlook the troubles in life. And get go and pray to God. And we can pray to God together and we can get through it. When you misapply God, Jesus, husband, wife, children, job, when you misapply that and you change things around, then you got the devil coming in and then you got destruction and you have evil. Adultery, one of the evils is somebody's not giving of themselves a sacrifice to their spouse. 
because they would not be looking for something else from someone else. That's a hard statement to make. Yes, it is. We've got to, we are supposed to repent of our sins, not enjoy our sins. That's the problem. And we enjoy our sins until somebody of authority, a doctor, a lawyer, or who, or the pastor said, because of that sin you've been enjoying, you are now going to suffer the consequences or the evil thereof. Again, smoking. All right, go ahead and enjoy smoking. Waste your money. I did it. God gave me the victory over quitting. As a result of that, I got emphysema. I got to have breathing thing. I, I'm supposed, I forget, but I got to stick this thing in my mouth. And go, <gasps> I get shortness of breath at times. I wheeze. Why? Because I used to smoke. And there are people who still smoke and they know it's wrong and they're saved. And then when the doctor says you got emphysema, you got lung cancer. Your lungs ain't going to work. Your lungs are, are bothered. You got sores on your lips and you know, because you sinned. And because the consequences of those sins, you got evil. And again, we talk about smoking is evil. The diseases you get from smoking is evil. The tobacco plant, that's not evil at all. I've never seen it. Maybe tobacco plant, maybe it's pretty. I don't know. I've never seen tobacco plant. What you do, and that's, I'm not going to get into that because that's from the last study. You want to learn about tobacco and marijuana, and you get the uh, introduction number two. You want to begin to study, get introduction number one. Now we're into where does the first time evil first show up in the Bible? It showed up in a fruit. And when you have the fruit of evil, the seeds grow and they take plant and they produce. Be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall all three. That rule goes for evil and sin and also goes for good. I can go out and witness to people, and people can get saved. That's good and wonderful fruit. And that, 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 some of those people will go out and witness, and they'll get fruit. Well, I've got fruit from the fruit of the fruit of the fruit of the people who gone and got saved because of me going out witnessing, and they're going out witnessing, got, and I'm getting fruit by that. But a man also or a woman also can go out and have sexual relations with people who she's not supposed to. She can have sexual relations outside of her husband or not even married yet in fornication and get VDs that she can pass on her children, that her children may pass on to their children, and their children can pass it on to their children. And the children didn't do nothing. And psychiatrists have fun. Blame your mother. Blame your grandmother. Bring your great great grand. Yeah, we can blame great grandma Adam and great grandpa, uh, great grandpa Adam and great grandma Eve. We can blame them. No, we can, but we can't, because we got to live with the consequences we got now. Because I have enough sin in my life that I do, that I do willingly and I do unknowingly. And there are sins I'm doing I don't even know about. I've got to deal with them. Never mind with what Grandma and Grandpa Adam and Eve did. Now they started the ball going, but what am I doing? Now I need to say no to sinning. Or I'm going to have to answer to God with chastisement, and I'm going to have to answer to whatever that sin is, the consequences of that sin. And it'll be a lot more than what it was to begin. Because the result of sin is the wages of sin is death. We all die because we're sinners. That's evil. 
And every death certificate, I got two of them. Every death certificate should be signed with the first thing. That, that, and there, there's several spots on the, on the death certificate. My first wife, there were three or four things listed. My second wife, there was one thing listed for death. But there's, uh, there's five things. Number one on a death certificate ought to be the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. That is the main reason why we sin. Now, as a result of sin killing us, what is the, the evil? Being hit by a bus. We died because we smoked. We died because we drank. We died because our body to say, that's it, I'm done, I'm tired. We, we died because we bled to death. We died under torture. We died in a plane crash. We died being in an auto accident. We died because of cancer. We died because of... of... See, all the ways of death is because of sin. Sin is evil. And sin produces evil. And sometimes what's the evil of sins don't bring death right away, Adam and Eve. Adam did not die right away. Eve learned that, guess what? I don't know how she found out. She found out that her son was murdered by her other son. What is that? That is the evil for disobeying God and eating that fruit. When the, when the lab tests or the x-rays come back, Foul, not good. I don't have good news for you. That is a cause of evil by a sin. And it does not have to be your sin. It could be someone else's sin. Secondhand smoke. You have may have never smoked a cigarette in your life. But you've been around people who did smoke. What did able do to be killed by his brother. I mean, I'm just speaking, off general. I know his offering was better than, than I was just saying, what brought the death of, of, of Abel, the wages of sin? Where did that sin come from? Mom and dad. You know, it's remarkable. I have never seen a cemetery, and it could be out there, but I've never seen a cemetery with a sign say closed because we're full. And yet Proverbs speaks about death is just just keeps going. It keeps wanting to devour more and more. Every person conceived in the womb will die. They may die in the womb is untimely, or they may die 123 years old. Who knows? Death is an evil by sin. And had the first place evil shows up, Genesis 2, 9, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, had Adam and Eve left that tree alone and never touched it, we would be in that garden, we would be in this world with no pain, no sorrow, no troubles, no authority. I mean, you know, husband's ahead of the wife. There would be no hospital behind me. We would not be in debt. We would not be sinning. We would not be having tobacco. We would not be having illegal drugs. We would not have an alcohol problem. We would. The police would be out of work. The fire department would be non-assistant. We would be living a life of wonder and great. But... The fruit of that tree of knowledge of good and evil was eaten. We did become sinners. We are going to die. And what do we do? If we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful enough to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness and to say no to the flesh. You continue to sin. When you've been warned by a preacher, you've been warned by a Bible, you've been warned by the radio, you've been warned by people who love you, you've been warned by a, a, a professional person of practice, you know, a doctor, whoever. You have been warned. You have been warned. Even some of the packages, to, even I, I'm told the alcohol stuff now, drink sensibly. Well, just not drink at all. But okay, drink sensibly. 
You have been warned, as God said, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. When it comes to the consequences of sin, when it comes to sin and the evil that has followed, God has set forth himself and God has set forth other people to say, no, don't do it. Isn't that interesting? There are people who are not saved, or I don't know if they're saved, or they are saved, that are putting on packages, don't do this. There are agencies out there, and they are using advertisement, and they're using what they can, don't do drugs. I don't know if they're saved, I don't know if they're lost. But God has said for them, don't do it, and we do it. And then when we get the consequences, the evil that comes from that sin, oh, God, please get rid of it. Oh, God, I'm sorry. No, you're not. And listen, when it comes to something like alcohol, it can grab you like a boa constrictor. I have dealt with men in prison who have been involved with alcohol, and alcohol is one of them sins that, man, it is hard to get the victory. It is hard. Listen, there are people saved, they know they're saved, and they cannot get out of that alcohol. They try, they try, they pray, they get people to pray with them. It is a snake that's wrapped around them until death. And their mama or their papa may have started them doing it. I remember I can look back when I grew up as a kid in the 70s. I remember my, to get that little sip of beer from my dad. I thank God that little sip from my beer from my dad didn't leave to me with a messed up family, with a messed up life, that God has forgiven me. I gave up drinking. I drank for a while and I got in trouble drinking. I had a drunk one time, pull a 45 to my head, cocked, safety off. I was trying to think. He pulled that trigger, I would have been dead, right to my temple. By the mercy of God, by the grace of God, by God alone can you get victory over us. You can, you can stop it. Sometimes that battle is tough. Sometimes that battle with sin, the wages of sin, the only way you're going to stop it is death. Because in the grave, no human body sins anymore. The first time evil shows up in the Bible, it's there. There it is. It's a tree. It has fruit. God warned. Genesis 2, 17. Don't eat of it. Genesis 3, they did eat of it. And God said, okay, sorrow, pain. And there's consequences. And God has used people who are saved and people who are not saved. He's used professions. To warn man saved and lost, don't do that. And man disobeys God like Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Nothing has changed from Genesis 3. We all, we all, don't say you're, oh, I've never sinned. You disobeyed against God. We all do it. We don't think about the consequences. We may know. Listen, I had an, I had an Uncle Arthur die. Smoking cigars of cancer. I forget it was lung. I had so long ago, I remember it was lung, throat cancer, something like that. I don't remember. I knew people in my family who died of, of cancer from smoking, and yet I smoked many years, two or three packs a day. Now, I'm not bragging. I'm bragging that God got me out of that. I thank God I had a loving wife, Lisa, that tried to help me quit smoking. I bet you she prayed for my soul to quit that smoking. Because I did. I prayed to God. I tried everything I could to quit. The best thing is never to start, Adam. The day that you eat your up, don't start. If you have started in a sin, you get down in prayer, you get your loved ones praying for you, you get your church praying for you, you get your pastor, you get your doctor, say, I need help. But you go to God first. 
You say, God, I am not wanting to do it. I am doing it. I am sorry I'm doing it. I am repenting of my doing it. I need the battle. I need the armor of the Christian to fight. I ain't fighting the Catholic Church. I ain't fighting the Jehovah Witness. I ain't fighting it. I'm fighting my own sin. Lord, I need help. Pastor, I have this sin. I don't want to tell anybody. I got this sin. I want to quit. Pray for me, Pastor. Church, I have a un, uh, what is it? Uh, unmentioned. I forget what it's when they say they don't want to tell you what this is. Uh, you know what it is. I can't think. Honey, honey, listen. You know I, I got this sin. You know. Pray for me, please. God, please. Please help me to stop wife. Help me to stop husband, please. Children, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Maybe you know what it is, but please, I need to stop for your health, for your well-being. As your father, as your mother, please help me to stop and get people and the Lord on your side to quit smoking. Do it. Sometimes it may be a battle. The best thing is not to do it. Evil shows up in the Bible as a tree. There it is. Don't touch it. It was touched. It was eaten. We got the consequences. And that sin passes on to, we're all born in that sin. A baby will cry for no reason. Just, I want attention. Me, myself, and I. And that kid don't even know nothing. Even the parents don't even realize. They learned that once they stole that cookie, they learned how to how to lie. They learned how to steal. I've dealt with many people in ministry. I've seen many people just reject and give up God because of sin. And there's heavy consequences. And the worst consequence you can have is by rejecting Jesus Christ and waking up in hell for all eternity. When you wake up in hell, there is no more relief. There is no more answer. There is no more help. There is no more hope. There is no more satisfaction in hell. You better listen to that preacher preaching. You better read that gospel track. You better get saved and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ before you die. And you will die because you are a sinner. I dealt with one guy who had no sin. You're a sinner by saying you have not sinned. First uh, John one. That's the first time evil shows up in the Bible. It was just sitting there on a on a tree, and it even called itself out. The devil called it out. But the woman had her eye on it before the devil showed up, and the devil knew it. You got your eye on something. You got your taste buds set on something. You want to touch something. You want to feel something. You want something that God has said, thou shalt not. Don't do it. Because when you do do it, the consequences thereof will be evil. When you sin against God. And what, uh, I'm not going to quote this verse, Greg, but be sure to know that your sin will find you out. 